So I'll comment uh, this section of this code that we used in our previous series to fetch data from the app itself. But now we want it to be dynamic to be able to fetch data from a server. And for this, we'll be using the Volley library. And to do that, we're going to be adding the dependencies very soon. Before I go ahead and add the dependencies, I'll just create a simple variable of string that will point us to where the PHP file is located in the server. So if you can remember in our previous tutorial, we created a PHP file to uh, fetch the data and we also told the PHP file that it should expect a get parameter of page. So that's why we have the page there, which is going to be sent. And also I will go ahead and create uh, an array list, a new array list. It's going to be empty, you know, so that when the app runs and maybe there's no network, it's going to just going to have uh, an empty array list. Now to start communicating with our server, we need to create a server request and I'll do that using Volley. So I'll go ahead and add the Volley dependency. Go to the volley site, the documentation. Here's the dependency. I'll just copy this and paste it in my app level dependency. Then I'll sync the project. When that's done, I should be able to work with volley. So the first thing is to create a new request queue from the activity which you want to communicate with the server. So passing the activity in which you're working in. Just to make my code look a bit neater, or just the way I love doing things, I'll be creating methods. And in those methods, I would be also writing in more codes. So the first one I have here, just get data. So in the get data, I would be adding a, a request to my volley. And I would love the request to take the parameter of page because we've written the code to acknowledge when the page number comes in. So I'm going to add the request queue, add to the request queue. That add, to do that, use that add. Then in here, I'm going to be creating another method. I'm going to pass in another method which is going to have the page parameter you can see that has an error so i'll just create page should be end because i'm passing in anything from zero upwards i have that one then i create another word method now this method will be a json array request json array request with the page parameter so you can see it's a json array request because i am going to be returning a json uh, a json uh, format or something at the end of the method unlike the one i had the void which is not going to return anything but for this method i'm going to return something so it's always good that when your network is fetching something, you put a loading uh, progress or anything to just show that something is loading. I'm not going to do that now. Just go ahead and create my JSON request. So for a JSON request, you need the URL, which is the place it is going to be pointing to. Then you need the listeners. The one that listens for the response and the one that listens for error. So for my URL, because it ended with a get parameter, which was why we had the question mark page, I'm going to pass in the page, the page we get in from the get data from server method, which I've done. And just to be safe, I'll wrap it around the string value of that. Then I added a response listener, and I'm also going to add for when there's an error, an error response listener. Okay, so in this on response, it's where you're gonna get anything 
gotten from the server so what we're gonna do is I'll just quickly log it log the response just for us to see so I'm just gonna log that just use log i just call it response then what I want to log in is response in here I can also log Okay, I just use to then just to see if there's an error the message or the error message so the error message is simply the error that is passed in I almost forgot my return is null so I'm gonna change that so I need to return the JSON array request I'll also add like some rules, like some timeout rules. They call it policy, just in case if it's taking so long, if the network is taking so long. It's always good to add this so that when the network takes quite a time, you could have like a retry button for the user instead of uh, you know leaving the user to wait till God knows when. Okay. So when I'm done, this will return my JSON error. When I'm done, I'm going to just run this and see if it logs a good response. So if you look at the logs, you're gonna see a JSON array of all the things we stored in the server from our previous tutorial. So I will add a page increment for each time the get data method is called. So that every time a user like scrolls through the application and when the get data method is called it fetches the next available data from the server so after getting the json array from the server i'm going to pass the data or arrange it in such a way i can put them in my recycler view in which you created before so i'll create a method just like i always love doing and i'll pass in the response which is a json array in here i would first of all create a for loop i'll pass in the response gotten from the server which is a json array so i'm going to be checking for how long the json array is so i'll use response length so my for loop will be valid for the length of the JSON. Now the first thing I'll do is to create an empty constructor here. Now I'll have to head back to my list unit activity, which I created because I have a, an error here. It's expecting me to pass in some parameter. So I'm going to create an empty constructor here a method so that I don't get that error anymore so that it would accept when nothing is passed and also accept when something is passed to it so once I do that I'm gonna create an object of JSON I'll first of all assign it to null then because sometimes you could have uh, you know you couldn't you could get nothing from the server so it's best to use try and catch this will help us you know prevent crashing on our application instead of crashing it will just uh, print out the error for us so I'll have that print print stack sorry I'll go ahead to my try I create an object from the response which is the JSON array then I'm going to do something I'm going to assign the part of the JSON which represents the data like you can see the name the price the color and all that I'm going to assign them to 
the set parameters which we set in the list unit we did that in uh, i think the no the video two of this series so i'm going to be setting the parameters for each as you can see i have set name <coughs> i also have set price set color and all that I want you to go ahead and also do this in yours. I will also go ahead and change all my image variable from int to string. So make sure you implement all those changes. Now this is because I'm fetching the image names from the database in the server, which will come in as a string. So make sure you also change all that. So we're gonna have one for ID. You can see an error, so I'll head back to this. Create a new string of ID. Create a new getter and set a method for it. Let's copy that, cut and paste that down here. So after you finish doing this, you have to go ahead and pass all this into the array which is empty array which we made earlier which is the list unit list uh, then add all the objects now after you do this you're going to need to notify the recycler view that there have been some changes in the array list to get my images from the server, I will head over to my list adapter in the unbind view holder. I would add the Picasso library. Now to do that, I will need to add the dependency for Picasso. Now the Picasso library will help me fetch the image from the image folder that I created in my server. It will do this by matching the names that we got from the JSON array, which is the image names, to the image in the folder that's located in the server. So when you've added the dependency, head back to your adapter in the unbind view folder, view holder, add your Picasso. Now I'm gonna be explaining in details with what I'm gonna display on the screen now on how Picasso actually works. Now your app should be able to get information from the server. In the next part of this series, I'll show you how to add the scroll listener that will help trigger the pagination function for the app. This will enable the app to be able to fetch more information as the user scrolls through the app. So for any questions, just leave it in the comment section below. I'll be very happy to answer your questions. And if you like my video or my channel, please hit the subscribe button to keep you updated on new videos. So see you guys in the next video.